yo guys, welcome back to another video. This is going to be the OPO9 tier list prediction with the bans in effect. So with Red Purple Law Leader gone and with NES Lobby gone for Luchi, what the meta might look like. This is just, just my opinions. Just gonna have some fun, make have some guesses, just have a little bit of fun, all right? Don't get mad at me. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna take a look make some predictions of what the the new leaders might um the new top leaders might be and then at the end we'll throw in all of the opo 9 leaders and kind of do our predictions for that as well but the meta is going to be totally different with law and uh law gone and luchi nerfed so i'm really really excited as i'm sure are a lot of people over here in the east and for you guys in the west when you get uh the new 08 format that is completely brand new so really really exciting times and just want to make a quick little fun tier list so without any further ado let's jump in and let's get started all right as always let's go over the tiers really quickly just gonna do tier one tier 1.5 tier two uh a maybe slash tier three here are our leaders here's the opio 9 leaders and i do have a spice and copium um the uh, uh row here and then we got f for fallen heroes shout out pour one out for red purple law joining old man sakazuki and then here's the rest of the leaders down here sorry if your favorite leaders are down here there's definitely dude there's some weird spice that could like be here and we just don't know like red purple uta maybe even with the the new like red hair pirates and stuff um but yeah just apologies i can't get through all of them these are just like kind of the ones that are on the radar at least you know um and let's talk about it so i guess we'll just go in order here obviously okay nice we got yamato my favorite up first i'm gonna put yamato just chilling in tier two for now um with law gone uh it's kind of the same thing that's happening in for 08 in the west like with law gone and luchi nerfed you don't have to just run the sky aggro version you really you didn't have to have to for op08 but it just gave you the best consistency against red purple law um so you kind of had to but it's just so nice to uh feel like we can cook with yamato again because for an entire set it really felt like we couldn't and um since that's my favorite thing to do is kind of like deck build and play my favorite leaders um even if they're not like at the top of the meta that was really hard for me um to like i wasn't enjoying it a lot for like through the middle to the end of coming up to the end of lpo8 over here so um like fortress is back on the menu samurai uh yamato is back on the menu lots of co cool things going on here i um, just gonna put yamato in tier two for now uh next we got reiju i said this in my other tier list video but like I think people are in the West and the East. People are, are coping a little too hard on Reju at the moment. Yes, in OP08, I think the 07 cope is is much less warranted. 08, sure, you got like Black Maria text that you can do now. So if you want to just like, um, basically, you can you can play back you can like play Black Maria like in a well timed position to get your dawn up say if you have a judge right and you're at like four dawn because you've been doing raju things most of the game you play that black maria you go up to like eight or nine dawn whatever your opponent's at and uh like if you go from four to nine and then you go to ten even if you go from three to eight and then you go to ten the next turn when you get your dawn for your turn you have enough dawn for judge and you can do kind of wacky things but again even with the opo8 cards and i'm not even sure if i don't think she really gets any buffs from like purple for op09 i may be blanking on some cards here but um the for the the majority of it i think is still just like you know the foxy porsche um package just cheating out etgs as quickly as you can and again with that with that being your main engine for the deck you're prone to just not seeing what you need and you're like essentially bricking even if you're just drawing tons of counter and you're drawing a lot with Reju, but if you don't get it started within the first couple of turns, and if you don't have that one or two Porsche to kind of like get the ball rolling and combo off of, you're in a tight spot and you just lose. So um, I think the cope is, uh, is not as warranted as as, um, as people are like, I, I think it's, she's just over, a little overhyped. Nami, I, this is really hard, I'm not sure. Um, because with Law gone, Nami could be back on the menu. And um, we'll have to see. We'll just kind of have to see. For now, I'm going to put Nami in Tier 2. Uh, Luchi, Tier 1. A mono black deck that can utilize Moria is just broken. So uh, I don't think there's much I need to say there. I think he's still really strong without stage. 
and uh yeah that's it that's literally it uh black Ye yellow luffy i think is still really really strong um this one's harder pr to predict i'm really not sure like i don't think there's necessarily going to be a best deck in format for op09 at least not for the first couple weeks um it's not that there can't be i just am not sure i'm really really not sure um boa man boa's hard to place here i'm really not sure um boa kind of depends on how well the other decks that she does well into are doing she's one of those leaders that's very like dependent on the meta because she's a good counter to certain things so i don't know for now i'm just gonna put her in tier two um ploofy definitely got some um buffs some some power ups i actually think ploofy is, is probably somewhere around here 1.5 um this may be putting him too high i'm not too sure we can def we can rearrange things as we go dofi man i want to put dofi like right here i might put him at like number three or number two this these aren't necessarily ordered for now um and we'll see if we can come to like a conclusion of the ordering if not it's just going to be like here's the the row and they're not technically ordered but do with it what you will <laughs> kind of a thing uh 8.5 dofi is a menace and with luchi losing stage and uh law being gone i think he's just gonna kind of the first the first couple of weeks of op09 dofi is is my pick for best deck in format like no no joke no joke i think he's just because people are you know a lot of people have been playing him a lot of people have already gotten in decent practice through ap uh, 8.5 through what's going to be to the end until the start of 09 i think he's just really really good like he could be here right now just at the top of the list too but i think he still loses to um you know like certain decks that can just handle the the swarm um still i think even without stage i think luchi's probably going to be hand be able to handle dofi just not as easily anymore and uh i do think he still loses to decks like anel um even in 8.5 most of the time you can't you can't swarm fast enough and anel especially if they're playing you know egghead nami um and some of the especially if they're playing like thunderbird or uh yeah the 300 million volt thunderbird event where you ko up to one of your opponents the cost characters that's the same as their life um it's just it's just rough um so there are certain decks that he's gonna still struggle into uh speaking of now let's just put him up here i e either up here or here it's really gonna depend um oddly enough anel is kind of like boa where uh he's you know Anel is like uh, famous for not really having a uh, a, a, a super favorable matchup into mo like anything for for like the lack of a better like way to put it, but just like does it's it's a weird reactive deck. It's not super strong into like X deck or Y deck, but it's very good in a general sense and only loses to a few certain decks like Nami. Um, Bonnie has a pretty good time against Anel. Uh, Samurai Yamato can beat Anel fairly consistently. Um, and then obviously Black, right? Like uh, uh, a buffed up Luchi can destroy Anel. But um, I'm just gonna put him here for now. Red Black Sabo is really interesting because if things like, um, if Luchi and Black Yellow Luffy and certain decks are, um, going to be very popular i would say blackbeard too but i'm not sure how reliant blackbeard is going to be on the the ko effects so i'm not really sure um but if you see a lot of mono black and ko heavy decks reaching up to the top like uh, i think sabo does okay into an l and stuff too if you're running like a moria and some of the bigger bodies um I think uh, you could see Ta Sabo go up, but for now I'm just gonna put him in the maybe category because he really is a maybe. Um, Rebecca, I'm gonna just respectfully put you in spice because I think she could go up here, but I think she's more of a spice. She needs to be cooked with, and um, she's always got this latent power, bro. She's like Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. It's just like, when are you gonna go Super Saiyan, bro, and like finally pop off and be as good as you were back in OP04, at least for us in the East. Um, Red Yellow Sabo is a maybe because he's getting some buffs. 
with the new yellow revolutionary army cards and um i think uh, he has some potential i really do um just if he can get his like aggro healing combos down consistently enough i do think he's really good um especially into certain matchups but uh kind of just dies into an l and ha can have a rough matchup against uh like other decks that have lots of blockers and like uh, a high life uh, or high attack power like a 9k leader with black hill luffy Bella Betty is going into spice um i do think with the omission of red purple law with red purple law gone betty has this like small window where she might be extremely strong because like just that that swarm rush aggro but like with she just packs such punch and yes she's always going to be a glass cannon but that's just how the deck works and it's like um good players good players can make Bella betty work um it's really really hard i've been trying to practice with her a little bit recently and i just can't i can't get it down but i know there's better players out there who could probably make her work um and of course we still haven't seen all of the cards yet so she may be getting a few more boosts but i do think she actually pairs well with a lot of the egghead cards and obviously the revolutionary army cards uh red dragon why are you here <laughs> and maybe you're going to copium um yeah he's he's i i feel like i want to throw him a bone most of the time and it's just like maybe you just need to stay in copium but if you're in copium that means that there's still a chance right there's still hope for you um let's move on green bonnie so similarly to the west when i saw the bands you think like man bonnie is going straight to the top straight to the moon baby but here's the thing is even a stageless luchi is still difficult for bonnie um and unfortunately uh blue is gonna be difficult um blue is always difficult boa like beats up bonnie most of the time reiju i think as long as you're running five cost carrot and maybe even start teching in luna for dofi and stuff like reiju um you'll probably be okay the only problem is it's hard to balance the the controlling of the mid game like that with stuff like carrot and luna but then also having consistently getting your top end that you're running enough for decks like anel and luchi and black Hill luffy so we'll see for now i'm gonna put her maybe right here i do think she is still very very strong but the problem i think i can see coming is um now that blue doesn't necessarily need the gravity blades as much like dofi used to run two to four gravity blades just for essentially red purple law like really that's almost all it was for um now i don't think they have to run gravity blade as much anymore and you're gonna see people running like one to two two to four red rocks just because now it's like okay maybe they can beat anel if they run two to four red rocks maybe they can beat luchi more consistently now if they swarm heavily and have the two to three red rocks to go um, get rid of anything if they're gaining too much advantage with Moria, etc. Right? Um, so in that case, it might be a little bit of a problem, um, but we'll have to see. Um, Bonnie doesn't fare well with like earlier mid game removal as well. That's kind of the problem. So I do think that the um, the Gravity Blade actually hurts her more than a Red Rock would, just because you get your, like, your Cavendishes and your Rouges and stuff like that just sent to the bottom. And if you can't recover faster than they can just reestablish their board, you just lose, right? Bonnie notoriously has a, a really hard matchup into like Boa um, and other blue decks. But we'll see. Reiju is not really going to have the um, capacity to run. Like, I guess if you're running Black Maria, maybe you can run Gravity Blade. But at that point, you're just like starting to steer off course and you're not running as much of a smooth engine. Um, with like the the foxy pirates and the the Vinsmoke family. It's kind of the same problem as uh, Luffy If you tech too much your actual core engine becomes less consistent and then it becomes a problem I think rage is gonna have a similar problem So rage is not a very good deck to like tech for other things um, Which is gonna be interesting to see how that works out putting I'm gonna put pudding at the top of like maybe slash tier 3 just because um, with red purple log on and you know if she gets um i don't really think she's getting too much support coming in op09 but um if she can consistently ramp into those 10 moms like man it's it's hard right it's it's very difficult uh marco marco will put in like tier two maybe um i think he's good 
I'll put him above Yamato. Um, I think Marco just utilizes the seven cost white beard so well uh, with leader effect and just throwing him on the board. Um, just because the seven cost white beard allows you to put Arrested Dawn onto your leader character is so strong. So even on curve seven Dawn, you can get off a, um, you can KO a 5k or five, yeah, 5k or less with that. Uh, new gate and it allows you to still use leader ability in the same turn and you're swinging at least 6k with leader um, <clears throat> And like if you run the nine cost Sanji and the Rayleigh build You just dominate against decks like Anel like they really can't handle it um, Unfortunately like Vegapunk too. It's very very hard Marco's a really rough matchup, but like Marco like uh, You know Marco loses to Yamato I think Marco might struggle against uh, Just some of these other decks if they can out pace them or out like big body them um i don't know some of the, what some of these matchups look like for marco like ploofy um i really haven't seen too much with black yellow luffy either um black's interesting dofi's gonna be interesting so for now i'll just put him in tier two kalgara um i'll put him in tier three just because uh like Ban I think Bandai is, is worried about giving him any more support because if he could pop off any harder than he already can, it might be worrying. But um, I do think the the merits of like a, a Swarm aggro deck in OPO9 are probably going to be pretty high. I think Swarm aggro is going to do really well against like Blackbeard oops, and uh, Shanks and even stuff like Lim. Honestly, even against stuff like Robin and potentially black uh, black purple luffy because he's only a four life leader so probably shouldn't sleep on some of these like aggro swarm leaders and that's a, that's another reason why blue dofi is is so high up in my opinion but uh just gonna put him here for now all right moving on to blue yellow ace i think uh he might be copium unfortunately but like in the best way possible and i love ace i love 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 ace but i think he's just gonna be copium here for a second um Oh, which reminds me, I think I need to add our boy. Sorry, didn't have him in there. My apologies. Um, Red Ace deserves to be in here too. VV is Copium. Uh, Blue Yellow Ace, I think, just has potential. But until we just kind of see it, some of the Copium is kind of like, until I see it, I can't really comment kind of a thing. Uh, Moria, I think, is still decent. But I think it's just the same problem as, as most of the time where it's kind of like Luchi does it better or he doesn't have a strong enough like matchup spread in order to kind of like get his get a foothold on anything uh, higher than like tier 3 or tier 2. Like honestly he could go down here but I'll throw him a bone and put him into tier 2 since this is like a really soft list here. Katakuri I think is just tier 3 just because... Um, Nah, I'll have, to, I'll have to put him up here. Like, he's performing better than Moria is. I can't put him... I, can't, I gotta put Moria down here, I think, actually. Um, Katakuri definitely goes Tier 2, just because he's been performing pretty well in uh, Asia. Just with the new... Um, whatchamacallit? Like, the new Star Deck uh, support and everything like that. So, uh, not too amazing, but, like, he's winning flagships and placing and... Um, Getting decent results at flagships. Not anything crazy like big CS results recently, but um, you know he's still getting up there. Uh, Red Green Law, I think, is just copium, um, but, but like with Blue Yellow Ace, kind of in the best way possible. Um, I think people are cooking with him currently at the moment. As soon as Red Purple Law got banned, you saw like on Twitter, everyone's like, "He's back!" And it's Red Green Law, and it's like. Just wait two weeks, everyone will stop playing him again. Or they'll crack the code, and I'm I'm talking trash, so we'll find out. Red Green Odin, I think, goes into the spice category. You know what? I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw Red Green Law into the spice. I'll give it to you guys, alright? I love Law as a character. The leaders just never click with me, but I always want to throw him a bone. Um I, I think he he can get cooked if you it spice has the potential right it's there's there's hope and it's the potential to cook with so that's why i'll leave it there um red green owner similarly without um with black nerfed which was just the worst matchup possible and red green law which was another difficult matchup gone or red purple law sorry uh red green odin just has a, a real shot and like you can just throw the um the roger the 10 drop roger into odin and just pray 
and just uh, oonga boonga that shit. So that might honestly be like a new tactic that you can do, like set up really strong control early mid game and then just start oonga boonga 10 dropping people towards the end and uh, just hope you can finish the game. I will personally be cooking with red green Odin with the new um, like uh, red hair cards and at least just Roger. Uh, King. King is an interesting one. I would like to put him in Copium. I think we're going to move back into, a, for the most part, initially kind of slower meta with like Dofi and Reiju kind of being like the top tier swarm aggro kind of decks. Um, but with only two of these here, and since I don't think either of these is necessarily going to be like tier zero, I don't think it can dictate the meta that much. So I do think there is potential for King to just maybe slot in here. Maybe, maybe. We'll have to see. And I'm I'm really throwing King a bone here by putting him here. I might have to move him. <laughs> I know I have to move him. I'm gonna put him in Spice because I think there's hope. I'm gonna just change this right now. It's Spice slash Hope. Um, I think he has a little bit of hope. Uh, Vegapunk, we're gonna put him at the end of tier two. Just shouts out to my boy Ka, the Japanese player who top forward and then top 32'd with him at the CS uh, Wave 1 final uh, here in Japan. Really, really talented player, and that's mostly what got him there. But the deck is still really good into certain matchups. Like I said, you're going to struggle. The unfortunate thing is, like, you die to Katakuri. I think Katakuri is his worst matchup possible. Anel is almost a death sentence. Marco's really difficult. But outside of that, like, you can cook blue Dofies. If they don't run a ton of top end, or if they just don't, you know, if, they, if they're if they a Giga Chad and they're running 9 cost Sanji, 9 cost Mihawk, you can obviously, you can still lose if you're not playing correctly. But um, even against, like, you can beat Reiju with Vegapunk. Um, Bonnie's a little bit difficult. There's too many like kind of difficult matchups here where I can't really suggest. Like you can beat Lucci. It's not the it's not the hardest matchup in the world. Um, but some of the yellow matchups are the hardest matchup in the world. Um, Yamato's dicey, but like you can beat Yamato with Vegapunk. You just got to know what you're doing, and you just need to draw into one or two Shakas early on, and you'll be fine for for the most part. Especially if they're um, not able to get their Onamis or anything. If they can't banish you, you actually can beat Yamato's. It's um. Kind of, kind of wild, but you can. Uh, Zoro, we're gonna put him in tier three, just because I think you can see it right here. These like aggro swarm kind of decks, I think, have a real shot. Um, so we'll do this. We'll put Mori at the very end here. Um, Carrot, I also think so. In the opposite vein of like the swarm aggro decks potentially being kind of good, I do think there's one shot. There's one more shot here for Carrot where she can be a very good mid mid rangey controlling deck and with the new inclusion of like nine cost shanks from the starter decks um you do have a little bit more tools to to take on stuff like um like nell really but um you could even take on bonnie a little bit better uh black is still rough but again the thing that really really hurt you um with carrot playing against luchi was when they set up like stage into jack and they just get a free ko on you're essentially your deck is built around your five cost with carrot like your five cost carrot your inyo arashi your nekomamushis your uh, two cost your 2k carrot like there's so many good five costs that you want to run in that deck and uh just being able to get all of those just ko'd for essentially free is really really rough so them losing stage is actually a huge thing for us if you're a, if you're a carrot fan um i'm just gonna put her here um keep in mind these top three tiers really are like the more the more competitively viable and then these ones are you know just like it says maybe right so just keep that in mind um perona i do think we have some room here to cook um i think there's i i don't know if i can put putting this high up maybe here um i think out of the whole tier three maybe perona has the most potential um i know we just got that new searcher green perona so that's really exciting um i'm gonna try and go through the rest of these more quickly purple kaido i think there's i think there's some hope but i do think it's kind of copium i'm sorry red purple luffy i think actually gets a spot here just because of the new like red hair pirate buffs and goldie roger 
uh white beard oddly enough too just gets like the it's the the hey we got new red buffs and you can use them too and then ace I just love this ace. Um, Red ace is one of my favorites. I'm going to have to just throw him in as a maybe. Just because, like, these are the, hey, we got red buffs and we have a goldie Roger. Like, let's do that kind of a, a thing. Um, but again, take the tier three stuff with, like, a pinch of salt, you know, a grain of salt. Um, let's let's quickly, let's talk about the 09 leaders. So this, if there were no new leaders being introduced, this is maybe where I would put everything. Yes, I'm a Yamato stand. Yes, I'm a little bit biased, but I really do think that Yamato kind of goes here in the tier. Um, Blackbeard, I think, is just a solid 1.5, kind of taking out a Nell there. Um, he's just going to be, the, like, for all these 09 leaders, I'm going to have to see kind of how it works in the meta in order to really make a, a really uh, educated guess on this stuff. So, because I can't do that at the moment, we're just kind of, right, we're just guessing, right? Um, but he can stomp out a lot of like he could be really good against black yellow luffy he's really good against luchi obviously like L beating luchi and anel just with your effect alone is is really good and he's getting the card draw and like the support cards that he kind of needed to effectively use his leader effect almost every turn now um for like once you like after like turn three or four you're probably going to be able to use it every turn um or you just spam three to four black 10 cost blackbeards and you don't even need to you'll still win the game so he does seem like he has a lot of potential but he also seems like he could be like kind of a bust um so we'll have to see Lim, everyone's clowning on Lim, but she's actually kind of decent i think just being able to ramp and search zoro nine cost zoro and play it um, i think is really strong so i'm gonna throw her bone and put her in tier two as crazy as that sounds i'm gonna put her in tier two I do think if you just you do, if you don't get to go first and if you don't get to if you don't search what you need um then you just really do become an extremely weak deck and i'm curious to see how she can handle like the swarm kind of decks like dofi um without like teching anything for it robin robin is cool i've been testing her a little bit um just on the sim and uh i think she's she's really strong but you you fall into that like problem where it's kind of like um aggro yamato where like you're just like but but a little bit more versatile but you're still like you're trashing cards for leader effect you're relying on like a lot of your life to be helpful like um to an uncomfortable point almost and i know you can change that with kind of how you build the deck but there's also not too much you can change because you need it to work with her leader effect which is going to be a somewhat limiting thing um really really excited to, to like properly test out this leader though but a little worrying with how dependent she is on with uh triggers and everything um but for now i'll put her i'll put her above limb i'm just gonna go tier two uh luffy i think is gonna go tier one I really a lot of people are putting him as like best deck in format at the moment but a lot of people were saying shanks was going to be the best deck in format then we tested him a little bit and now he's kind of down um i don't know i really don't know just for now i could see him being extremely strong like the ramp and the high power cards and just like some of the new events he's gotten is really really good too um but for now i'm just going to put him right here shanks i think goes like right here maybe uh i think he's strong but i think he does have his weaknesses and i don't think he can handle necessarily like i think a nell might actually be really strong into shanks if they can just get off those um the uh the you know multiple big bodies at a time i think that's when i think shanks's leader effect becomes less helpful when you're facing somebody that's like rush or swarm when it's like fine you you can get rid of one of my 5k attacks but i have like five to six more coming at you right depending if you have like rush with red or something right um so if shanks can't like clear your board and also defend himself properly he's probably gonna have a struggle into that um but like i think the slower mid-rangey decks he's gonna do very well against and it's gonna be a fun kind of controlly red leader so i'm gonna put him there buggy i will put him in tier three i think he's gonna be strong i think 10 cost buggy is a little bit stronger than people might be like kind of giving it credit for but i do understand like the um the the kind of the copium in that and that it's just like objectively not really the strongest kind of thing and with limited support and not being able to fully fully utilize leader effect i think this is kind of where i would put him so 
that is it this is where i would put everything for now you could rearrange these you could reorder them and i think it would be totally fair i don't think this is like set in stone again these are just my opinions just for now i think like black yellow luffy or blue dofi is gonna be the kind of like temporary uh interim best second format for a few weeks until we get things figured out then maybe uh black purple luffy will jump up there maybe shanks maybe an l just maybe blackbeard sucks and an l becomes like best deck in format so who knows uh, maybe the cope maybe the hype is real and reiju becomes best deck in format as long as like yamato vegapunk robin red ace carrot as long as some of my favorite decks have a shot into these top two to three tiers i will be a happy man as long as i can cook with them i will be happy let me know um if you're excited for something if you think you know if there's anything glaring that i missed that you want to point out sure let me know but again these are all my opinions please don't just come bashing me in the comments but um yeah let me know if you feel strongly about something and have a good reason for it but uh that's it so thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace